My name is Amanda Armstrong and I'll be talking to you about managing people with renal impairment in your clinics. It's worth noting that between 10 and 16% of patients have some degree of renal impairment. Lots of patients who are elderly will um, develop renal impairment just through the ageing process. So it's very important that they're assessed so that they can be treated accordingly. The other patients to bear in mind that you really should screen for renal impairment when they come to your clinic are the diabetic patients, patients with hypertension, coronary vascular disease, any patients with any sort of structural um, problems with their renal system such as renal calculi or prostatic hypertrophy. Multi-system disease with potential renal involvement such as lupus is another disease that should be screened for as well as a history of kidney disease or if you've already detected haematuria and proteinuria. You should also yearly monitor all patients who are on nephrotoxic drugs such as lithium or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. There are various ways to assess renal function. Most doctors will tend to rely on urea and creatinine. However, this isn't raised until there's 60% of damage. Therefore, there are various formulas that are available, such as the Cockcroft and Gold equation, which uses weight, age, gender, as well as serum creatinine. One that is popular um, in the UK and Australia is the modification of diet in renal disease, the MDRD. And this also corrects for ethnicity. Both of these formulas are available on the internet and will be well worth using, but it is important to check with your local hospital and the local laboratories as to what actual system and formula they wish to use. Another way is, to be, is for the patient to produce a urine sample and this urine sample be tested for albumin and creatinine and a ratio determined, and this again will assess the impact of any renal impairment. Once you've assessed the renal function, you may need to prescribe if you are prescribing for patients with renal impairment, it is important to establish the degree of their impairment before making that prescription. It would be very sensible also to check with local protocol and local guidance on your prescription that you do actually give. In general, however, doses would be reduced in renal impairment and the duration of those doses would be lengthened. I hope you found this video clip useful. My key points are to make sure that you make a thorough assessment of the patient's renal function, especially if they're in the high-risk group. You make a prompt and urgent referral if they have severe renal impairment, and you prescribe with caution. I wish you all very well in your clinics, and hope you enjoy working with renal patients.